Okay, in this episode, Ghost starts out by talking to Tariq, um, telling him he wanted to um, speak with him. Um, he then receives the good news that he is going to become the running mate uh, for Lieutenant Governor. And Ramona was the one that leaked that. Then Sax goes into the old his old FBI office trying to find out if Will James and Patrick had been charged uh, for the murder of Lakeisha. His old supervisor basically let him know no. And he was asking about had ghost placement um searched. So basically, in a way, he told on himself without even noticing because later on, the other um, officer ended up coming with a um, search warrant. She got a little, she got one, just a bit, you know, the little bare minimum one where she can go in and pee and things like that. And she pulled that phone out of there that he had Dre plant in there the other week. So that blew up in his face. Escorted out of the building by security. Um, Ghost went to go uh, have breakfast with Ramona and his running mate. And basically, um, he informed her that they, he did not have the um, project running anymore and because he didn't have a location so she basically told him he needed to fix that um if he did not have a building she would have to weigh out her other options and her other option the first person would have been Tate which was like okay basically you you know and I need you to get the black vote and I need you to handle the business so he went from there and I want to say he went to and um he went to go visit his father's old building that his uncle ran or whatever like that um, after his father's death. He never kind of went back to go visit his uncle. His uncle barely, I mean, he recognized him. They ended up having a talk, rehashing, talking about old things and uh, what went on with his father. And Ghost really didn't want to revisit the past. He was just trying to find a way to, you know, get the building so he can continue. And also, he did want to still build something for his daughter's legacy the uncle agreed so he was able to secure the building blanca goes to talk to her supervisor about the evidence that she found um about terry silver's murder um basically talking about how she suspected that james had did it you know talking about the soil from the project was in the car and how afterwards you know he went and killed him and went and dropped his body off at the airport and all that stuff the supervisor basically was like look all the th only thing you were able to tell me is that his wife gave you all the information being you know giving him the location of where silver's car was and how you know where his body was found he was like okay well you just showing me that she know whatever you know what went on and told her that she needed to keep digging and she wanted a, a search warrant and it wouldn't be strong enough and technically the saint patrick's were still married so tasha wouldn't you know be able to testify or anything like that and he basically told her that she started to sound like sax in not a good way so blanca and sax goes to visit tate and talk about the QCP um, opening ceremony and basically asking about James that day and Tasha that day. And Tate, of course, salty. They strategically picked him because they knew he was going to be salty and, you know, kill dirt on him. He basically told him and confirmed, yeah, he was upset that day and he went out there after Tasha to talk to Tasha. So Blanca and X and Sack X. Tate, did he know about the relationship with James, uh, with Tasha and Silver? So Tate lied and made up 
a story to him and he knew about it. And um he signed an affidavit and once Blanca left, she was like, Okay, we don't have anything because he basically lied and she didn't want to use her statement. So, um, James go meet Simon to gain capital to be able to make his next move. Um he later told Ramona that he secured the building and she released a new announcement, official announcement of him becoming the lieutenant governor by being the other the lady's running mate. So Blanca was awarded a sneak and peek warrant and she took a sample of his shoes and she found that phone there. And of course the phone, once it was opened by the technician, they was able to tell that it was Silver's phone. Ghost goes to um, visit Raina's grave site and he runs into Tasha. So basically um, he ended up talking about, you know, him moving on with his new life, his new future. Um, releasing her from his marriage and basically saying, you know, you know, he he won't be a part of her new life and all that foolishness or whatever. So, um, Blanca goes to her boss and report her findings. He didn't believe her and thought, you know, felt like the phone had been could have been planted because of course Sax went to go see him earlier and asked, did anybody go there yet? And his question was, well, who would do, you know, how was it there and who would do it being that he was able to, you know, she, he just didn't understand how in the world he would be so sloppy with all the stuff that he's done in the multi-million dollar drug ring and all the murders that he already, already committed. Like, why would he be that sloppy to just like keep the man phone? So, Tate goes to see James. <laughs> He goes there to warn him. I guess he was going to go warn him about, you know, the people investigating him or whatever. But he didn't even get a chance. So, James ended up calling him salty. And, I mean, he was a little salty after James started talking trash to him. He basically sold him. He took his dream. And, you know, he basically degraded the man, like, real bad. So, Tate, you know, of course, left pissed off. So, he showed up to Truth to see ghost but he had dre with him i was like oh my gosh of all the people you would bring up in there so of course ghost is pissed off like what you doing you know what are you doing here so Tariq was like well he knows everything about me and he knows everything about you and you know he said he would tell it so um he go uh dre goes there because he needed you know money to be able to leave and all that day. that was you know and also, he told Ghost, he was like, yeah, I know you killed Jason, and you set me up for it, you framed me for it. So, he was like, look, you know, he ended up talking along with him, and he told me, yeah, I got 250000 or whatever for you, and what I can do is I can meet you in an hour, I gotta go get it. He was like, how in the world, my, um, how can I know, how do I know I can trust you at this point? He was like, you don't want to need me. And he called, he degraded that man. He called him a little helpless bitch, want to be gangster, all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, he was digging a bigger ditch for himself because he took an ego boost by being able to be, you know, having his future of getting into politics. So, um, of course, he, he ended up setting up Dre later or whatever because he ended up calling the guy to have the guy release the um, footage of Dre going up to the top of the penthouse. Um, and they went and picked Dre up. Tommy calls or texts him so he can meet him. He meets Tommy. They talk. Tommy's pissed off or whatever. He ended up telling him, you know, Ghost was like, look, I'm leaving you behind. And basically, he like, shit, no, you're not. He was like, you get everything you want and I don't have nothing. And... <laughs> He degrades that man. He was like, you you even need me to hate me. I was like, oh my gosh, now that's deep. So, they get ambushed. So, I'm guessing somebody must have been following Tommy. Is what it sounds like. So, they make, out of there, make it out of that. He look up, Tommy's gone. And the man that, you know, one of 
wanted to do to ambush him. He was dead. So that was that with that situation. And yeah, Tommy, had, you know, before all the ambushing and everything, he had pulled a gun out. And basically, he planned on killing him, killing him. And so, Sack, the um, supervisor, I can't never remember his name. The old supervisor, Tamika, Tamika came in and acted as Sack's attorney. But anyway, they go into the meeting. Oh, and Blanca is there. So, the supervisor basically accused Sacks of planning it. But he was like, because, you know, he was like, man, how in the world this phone got here? You had to do it. You, you know, up to what you, you know, up to no good or whatever. So, Blanca ended up telling that Sacks was there when they would at Silver's car and it's a possibility that he could have got the phone and put it you know put it up for later or whatever so of course the supervisor like yo are you serious you know he's not even an um, attorney anymore and then Tamika's like oh, okay well then you know this looks bad on your part that was just a whole crazy situation also the lawyer Tamika brought up Tate's Afri no, yeah, Tate's affidavit and um I guess because, you know, Saks probably said something about it, too. So, um, yeah, Saks lied. That just showed, you know, that they still had a lot of work to even prove this case. And, you know, yeah. Anyway, so Saks, yeah, he was present. And basically, Blanca got real mad because she was like, you you know, you played me or whatever. And so, he blurted out, I'm sorry. So, basically, they was like, okay, so was that an admission? And, of course, his attorney advised him to be quiet again. So, Ghost goes and run down on Vincent. He was like, yeah, I should shoot you right now because what you did to Sari. He was like, come on, man. You, you, know, you, know, you know that kid deserved it or whatever. So, he was like, you know what? You know, I need you to do me a favor or whatever. You know, because he had connections to, like, the Depart Department of Corrections. So, he was like, well, I need you to smuggle a burner phone and say for somebody. So, he ended up getting it to the dude B2, or B whatever his name was, that uh, worked for Tommy that basically got locked up. Um, he ended up calling the phone and telling him, he was like, yo, you trying to, you know, do me a favor or whatever. You know, he was like, for what? He was like, F you, you know, Tommy or whatever. Like that. He was like, no, for money and revenge. And he was like, okay, that's what's up. So, Pez, which is Angie's sister, goes and meet James and basically um, wanted to know. Um, she basically was like, okay, well, I found out due to the autopsy that you didn't kill my sister or whatever. But she was like, for all I know, you could have hired the person that did. And he was like, you know, I love your sister. You know me from being a child. And, you know, I would trade my life for hers or whatever, whatever I could. So she asked him, well, who killed her? He said, I can't tell you. I don't know. But the way that he told it, it was just like, okay. It sounded like he knew. She got pissed off. was like, you know what? Well, you won't see me again. And she ended up leaving. So Ramona ended up overhearing the conversation and she had questions or whatever because she was like, you know what, the reason why, I, you know, her and her ex didn't work out because they both had a lot of secrets. So I guess, you know, that was her way of saying, look, we don't need to go into anything like this, you know, whatever. So, um, you know, they both agreed that they were trying to, you know, start something new without a whole bunch of secrets. And he... You know, told her everything was under control or whatever, you know, wanting the big thing. So, Ghost goes to Natasha and they go over to, you know, to the old penthouse or whatever, you know, after they refixed it and all that stuff. I said it was destroyed by Tommy, of course. So, they do that. They have, have it out or whatever, talk trash to one another. Um... He ended up apologizing, you know, that things didn't work out well between them. Um, she was mad because she felt like that he was trying to turn to Rick again or whatever. And um, at that point, Sasha didn't trust him and didn't trust his motives and really thought he had, you know, could have done it. So then he busted and said, well, maybe he should confess. That really pissed her off. So, um... Then goes end up telling her that okay, 
he knew about Keisha. And he was like, you know, next thing I know, I seen you out there and a the girl in the dead. You did it. So then she busts out and start talking about him killing Terry Silver. Um, he said, you know, he needed to stop. He told her, he's like, I'm going to, you know, stop covering for him. He needs to be responsible. Tasha got even madder. So, um, you know how Ghost had those little tangents where he go and talk, because he talked to, um, Angela earlier, her spirit or her ghost or whatever. So he talked to Raina. In so many words, going through that, he realized that she said, you taught me how to lie. And that was just like, I was like, wow, that had to be, you know, real hurtful because, you know, in all that, he felt like he was trying to protect her. But anyway, goes to Rick and up talking. Called, um, to recall, goes to liar, um, basically saw so him trust him and told him he needed to confess to him about you know this all the things that he had done and he was like you know i'm trying to help you he was like you know once i get in all this a lot of things that i should be able to do or whatever like that and so he asked about the dude breeze so goes did end up admitting that he did it you know while he was a teen or whatever and he was like he got in the way of my future basically he's selling his son is and he was like, with Tariq turning himself in and admitting what he did or whatever would be the best thing for the family. He was like, no, it's the best thing for you. Basically calling him selfish like he's always called him. So, Blanca and her supervisor goes to the judge to present their case or whatever because they want to get a um, warrant for St. Patrick. So, he pissed. He like, look, y'all back again. Um, y'all better do it by the book and whatever y'all got going on better measure up. So, because, you know, it was a time before where they pro tried to prosecute St. Patrick, they had to let him go and he got away with it. So he was like, well, y'all need an airtight solid case. So Blanca, um, presented the evidence that she had, which was, um, the little stuff from earlier. Then the supervisor, he busts out and pulled the phone out, which was crazy because I was like, okay, you just finished roasting her and oh boy about it but anyway i guess at that point he was just trying to get everything done um blanca ended up going back later and telling her, her witnesses which was pez and tate that she no longer needed them you know there was no case no more whatever like that you know of course they both was you know confused trying to figure out what happened um jane decided to take his relationship with um Ramona to the next level, you know, showing PDA, you know, he wanted to just do it right and all that stuff there. So Dre gets locked up or and Blanca, he I guess his far, his first phone phone call he calls Blanca. He basically was like, Look, they set me up, you know, I didn't kill Jason or whatever. So she's like, Well look, you're on camera do you have any evidence showing that, you know, you know, what you're saying? He was like, no. So, basically, um, she was like, well, listen, I'm going to ask you a question. And if the answer is yes, then I can get you out of here. So, basically, she asked him, did he see ghost kill Silver? He said, no. He said, I was there. So, basically, he was willing to say he was there during that murder just to get out because the people inside was trying to, you know, of course that's B2 was gonna kill him because he wanted that money. He ain't like Dre no way. So Ghost was trying to set that up with that burner phone and um, he even said he was willing to testify to it. So she got him out. Um, so Tariq goes to his father gives him one more chance one more time the same thing that, you know, they talked about when it came to Breeze. He went to him, went to his little party, whatever. And he said, you really want me to turn myself in? And he was like, yeah. So, <laughs> that was crazy. Um, The attorney Tamika tells Sachs he will go to jail 
Um, and it was an active warrant for him because without any witnesses for the evidence that they had pulled from the um, home, they basically decided to go and press charges on Saxon said. So Saxon, you know, he got his little gun out and he headed towards True. James and Ramona met up. They were talking about, you know, going to see each other, you know, later on or whatever. He was like, you know, he had to close the place out. Um, Dre ended up getting out. He it was just like everybody started heading towards True. Sax, um, Dre, Pez, she got her own um, gun in her purse. Take go out with his little hoodie. Blanca going with us with a warrant because she wanna arrest him because she got a witness to testify and that was Dre and that's all she needed. Tariq, um, he hit it that way because of course he tried to get his baby a chance to, you know, make things right. Tommy hit it that way because he wanted to kill him anyway from, you know, early. He was trying to, Tasha, t she just tired and she willing to do anything to protect her child at this time. And as Blanca approaches the club, she has a gunshot. Now in closing, he showed, they show like a little slow motion depiction of him being shot and falling from you know that little ledge he's standing in at, at the club true but i'm thinking to myself like okay who for one would have access and be able to get in there you got to be able to narrow that down to the closest people to him and i would think of his son tasha and Tommy because they all have worked closely with him and they know how to get it you know get in there they, i'm pretty sure you know they know the codes or whatever because i'm like okay the club was closed wouldn't it be the building be locked up and secure at that point? But then again, we don't know if it actually happened that night. And that's why we all got to stay tuned. It's a January 5th. What I think about this episode, I think it was a serious cliffhanger. Um, I'm, you know, I'm pissed that I got to wait to January, of course. But at the end of the day, I'm like, dang, they kill go. But honestly, I'm not surprised because it just turned into an everybody hates the situation. But he brought it on himself, being a jerk to everybody. You know, he was already cocky and confident, but it went up to another level when he was able to pull off this lieutenant governor thing. Then he got him a woman of status, and it was just like he was really, really feeling himself. But anyway. It's a good episode. Y'all let me know what you think. See y'all in January.